A continuum has really been a transformative element in my uh, in the world of dance for me. I met I met the practice of continuum 25 years ago and just instantly felt as though I met something that I deeply knew and recognized, but now I needed to learn about it. And I have found that it has become just a synthesis of all the things I care so much about, a uh, love of movement, science, a sense of the sacred that has led me as a dancer, and also explorations of the imagination and the psyche and embodying that as an artist. And Continuum for me was the place where it all came together. So it has been a very important tool in my choreographic process, as part of my teaching, and uh, it's a whole shift of a worldview and paradigm of what the body is. And so as I meet professional dancers, as I meet uh, young dance students, uh, I kind of enjoy offering a whole new perspective that kind of rocks their world in a way, but um, I think is also very expansive and inspiring to them. And I actually choose to only work with dancers who are familiar with Continuum and who have worked for a long time in Continuum with me. And uh, two, often dancers are resistant to Continuum because we're so used to being in charge and it's making our bodies do amazing things and accomplishing things. And often without feeling the interior of the forms and the movement we're inhabiting. So I always tell dancers, you know, reassure them as I'm introducing it to them that this is not to replace the magnificent articulation of the dance language they have studied and mastered but it's a way to enhance that language and bring more forward. I, because I, I think like modern dance or a style of modern dance or ballet is like a language we choose to speak and master. And before that would be just sound. And for a language of movement, what Continuum has brought to me is that it's like a study that's before the language of a dance, of a certain dance style, dance language. It's really an inquiry into the primary substance of what the, bo of what the body is made of. So that when a dancer can really inhabit this biological movement and start to sense their interior in a really alive, present way, then with the riches of that, they go back to inhabit the form of the language they're choosing to speak with more volume of themselves, with more presence. And so I found it incredibly valuable to dancers just at a level of presence and physical capacity. And then in a creative method, there's really two realms. One is, as a choreographer, I really invite people in. I'm a very collaborative choreographer. And uh, in fact, the only way I want to work is in collaboration, which is really the essence of what Continuum teaches too, about cooperation and how all life is interconnected. So I used to think as a choreographer, I used to feel a lot of pressure, like I had to invent movement and I had to come up with something and would have terror, you know, nightmares about having a room full of dancers with their hands on their hips going, well, what do you want me to do now? And not having any idea. And since doing Continuum, not only myself, but I invite everyone to just start to meet how life is already flowing. Movement is how is never ending. And so I just invite within myself and dancers to join with what is happening. And then the work of choreography is shaping and finding texture to the discovery of movement that you've just really joined with. I don't consider myself an inventor of movement anymore. I consider myself more a discoverer of movement. Well, more 
and more. I'm trusting, which I think has always been an innate quality in me, but I have come to really trust and develop the ability to really trust intuition and moving in that realm of needing something you don't know. I really have grown to trust some inner knowing that I cannot explain, like I really explore a lot and then all of a sudden, shh, I know what needs to be, what needs to get thrown out, what wants to come in. You know, it's like you're creating a living entity and there's a process of trusting, surrendering yourself to what's being born. And uh, this dear friend really was suggesting that so much of the Western world goes analytical brain first, and then we try to feel and see how we feel about the structure we just devised. And then we go back to analysis to uh, say, to try to explain how we felt about it. But my path as an artist, and I think all artists, is just the opposite of that. You start with an intuitive sense of like, oh, a little bud, there's something coming up out of the earth that wants to be born. And what is that? And, and you're in the messy, pushing up through the mud of trying to find the shape of something. And then once you come up with some form of a structure, then I do go into a very objective mind. I always tell my choreography students, you have to be able to go sit in the audience, pretend you know nothing, you don't know who you are, you don't know what the dance is, and you have to honestly watch the movie of your dance and be honest. Is that working? Did you just get bored? Why should you care? <laughs> you know, and I find when I do that, if I just got bored with my own work, I go, aha, I've got a problem. And then I go back in under the water, so to speak, back into the feeling nature to try to shape it again and fix it. So it's that process, that subjective process of the creative artist that I think Continuum really supports. Um, and that is the great need, I think, in our culture, in our time, because ultimately I do think we're all artists. And that, that way of really accessing one's deepest being as a resource, which is also the place of profound universality, um, is what is deeply called for in our culture. And it is the path of the artist that I think Continuum really, really supports.